Okay, well, let's jump into some examples, and you lay some out in your coverage of this particular topic. The first is something called two-component regulatory systems. Now, what are these systems? What are the two components, and what general purpose do they serve for bacteria? Yeah, so bacterial cells um, use two component systems to sense and respond to changes in the environment. And we find those um, throughout um, bacterial um, organisms. It is very, very common uh, in the prokaryotic world. And as their name implies, uh, two component systems essentially have two major components. You have the sensor histidine kinase and a response regulator. And the um, sensor kinase, uh, in response to um, chemical cues, undergoes autophosphorylation, which means that uh, a phosphate group is transferred from ATP to a histidine residue uh, on the kinase. And the histidine um, kinase has, has itself two domains, so it has an input domain and a transmitter domain, and uh, the input domain is located on the, on the cell's exterior, so outside of the cell, and it's um, particularly sit, uh, situated to uh, detect uh, incoming uh, environmental signals. And the, uh, the, the transmitter domain is situated on the cytoplasmic face of the cell membrane. And so it's positioned that it, so that it can interact with the response regulator. So the phosphate group that, um, remember I mentioned that the histidine residue of the response, uh, of the, of the um, histidine kinase gets um, a uh, phosphate group transferred to it from ATP. And then this phosphate group in turn is transferred to the response regulator. So that's the two, that's the second component, component of the two component system, which then drives a cellular output, such as turning genes on and off, et cetera. Um, uh, and so, as I mentioned before, two component regulatory systems are extremely common among bacteria. and Each utilizes the same basic design logic, uh, even though these are not evolutionarily descended from one another. Okay. All right. That's a good uh, basic uh, breakdown of it. So you've got a sense and response system that is common across uh, different organisms, even wildly different organisms, as you've pointed out. Now, you give the example of E. coli regulating outer membrane proteins in response to environmental osmolarity using a two-component system like you're describing. How does this system allow the bacterium to sense changes in its surroundings and then respond appropriately. Yeah, so osmolarity is essentially a measure of the concentration of solute particles in a solution. And um, the cell needs to regulate the expression of porins uh, in response to this uh, uh, environmental osmoregularity. Uh, and it does so uh, by means of a two component system. So in this case, the uh, sensor kinase is, um, look, um, the, uh, is, the, is a protein called MZ. Um, and it's located in the inner membrane. And the MZ uh, detects uh, osmolarity changes and it undergoes autophosphorylation. And then the response regulator for, for the system is known as OMP-R, and it receives the phosphate group from MZ and it regulates the uh, expression of genes. Uh, so when um, osmolarity is high, uh, the kinase activity of MZ is activated and this results in uh, the phosphorylation of OMP R. And when osmolarity is low, uh, the phosphatase activity of MZ is uh, activated, and this reduces the levels of phosphorylated OMP R. So when OMP R is phosphorylated, uh, it becomes an active dimer uh, that has uh, enhanced DNA binding ability that's specific to OMP C and OMP F, OMP -F uh, gene promoters. Uh, these are porin genes that uh, encode outer membrane proteins, which allow the passage of metabolites across the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. Gram-negative bacteria are bacterial cells that have two membranes, an inner and outer membrane. So the um, pore diameter of OMP-F is larger than the pore diameter of OMP-C. So this allows for a tenfold faster diffusion rate, which is advantageous under conditions of low osmo osmolarity, um, where there are scarce nutrients. Um, if, os if, if osmotic pressure is low, uh, the synthesis of OMP-F is increased, whereas if the osmotic pressure is high, the expression of OMP-C is increased. Uh, and also the transcription of um, MCF um, antisense RNA is initiated, uh, and this essentially blocks the transition of um, 
ump f by complementary uh, complementary binding, uh, and that represses the synthesis of ump f. Um, and so this is uh, controlled by uh, a two component system, making use of a, a, a sensor kinase as well as a response regulator. Okay, yeah, and that's uh, <clears throat> that's a good dose of technicality, as it were. And uh, I always hope that you know the people that are listening or watching are not going to get scared away by the the technical details. As Michael B. he challenges us in Darwin's Black Box, you know, we've got to bite the bullet of complexity if we want to understand why Darwinian evolution is not capable of this. So, audience, stay with us. This, you know, we we really do need to get into the the technical as aspects of this a little bit just to understand why. Um, so, Jonathan, I can always depend on you for that, and I'm I'm grateful for that. Okay, so another example that you've laid out is something called chemotaxis, and that's quite a fascinating example in itself, especially the idea that bacteria have kind of a memory system for chemical concentrations. Uh, can you explain how that system works and how it helps bacteria navigate their environment? Sure. So chemotaxis is uh, really a signal transduction system that enables the bacterial cell to move towards attractants like glucose or away from poisons and it does so by modulating the frequency of runs and tumbles so uh, basically the flagella of the bacterial cell uh, rotate as a bundle and their default is to rotate in a counterclockwise way uh, but uh, in response to chemical stimuli, chemical stimulus, it can switch direction and start spinning clockwise. And this results in the bacterial flagellar bundle breaking apart, and that results in the bacterial cell tumbling. Mm. And uh, if you are moving towards a, um, a food source like glucose, then you want long runs and less frequent tumbles so that you can move uh, in the direction of that food source. Whereas if you're moving towards a poison or you're moving away from a food source, then you want to have uh, frequent uh, tumbles and shorter runs so that you can reorient yourself and sample um, the, the environment and try to get closer to that food source um, or away from the poison. And the chemotaxis system is, uh, again, a two-component system. So uh, in this case, uh, the um, so that you have in, embedded in the cell membrane uh, methyl-accepting chemotaxis proteins and uh, different methyl-accepting chemotaxis proteins, which are also known as MCPs, can detect different types of molecules and they're able to bind attractants or repellents. And uh, these receptors then communicate with and activate the so-called key proteins. Um, and so pr there are proteins called key A and key W which are bound, uh, which are bound to the, the receptor. Key W essentially functions as an adapter protein, uh, but key A is what we call the uh, sensor kinase or histidine kinase uh, for this system. And uh, um, so uh, one, upon activation of the receptor, uh, the, the um, uh, conserved histidine residue of key A undergoes autophosphorylation by ATP. So it obtains a, a, um, a phosphate group. And uh, there are actually two response regulators uh, called key B and key Y. And there's a transfer of a phosphor of a phosphoryl group to uh, the conservative aspartate residue uh, from key A, right? So key B and key Y both receive a phosphate group from, from key A. And then uh, the, um, the key Y protein is uh, subsequently uh, interacts with the flagellar switch protein that's known as fly M. And that uh, induces the switching in flagellar direction from counterclockwise to clockwise. Um, and so this is, again, a two component system, uh, which is uh, analogous to the system that we uh, uh, reviewed previously uh, on regarding osmoregulation. Yeah, yeah. 